the Silver and Black remain at home in Week 11 for their third straight contest against an AFC West opponent. The Raiders will take the field against the Kansas City Chiefs this Sunday night in primetime, as the two clubs collide for the second and final time of the regular season in 2020. In their first matchup in Week 5, the Raiders took home a victory by a score of 40-32. The Chiefs lead the all-time series 6-5-5-3-2, while the Raiders will look to sweep Kansas City's club for the first time since 2012. Kickoff will commence at 5.20p. Here is injury report. The Kansas City Chiefs activated starting offensive tackles Eric Fisher and Mitchell Schwartz from the reserve COVID-19 list ahead of their Sunday night game against the Raiders. Schwartz back, running back Clyde edwards elaire illness and defensive end Taco Charlton ankle did not practice while receiver Sammy Watkins hamstring calf was limited after being full Wednesday. We got a piece of good news from the Kansas City Chiefs on Thursday. The four Chiefs assistant coaches took their turns at the podium to field questions from reporters, the team made some personnel announcements. Offensive lineman Mitch Schwartz and Eric Fisher would be back with the team, though Schwartz would be held out of practice and Fisher would practice. Running back Daryl Williams would not practice due to an illness. Thursday's NFL transaction report showed that Fisher and Schwartz have been removed from the team's reserve COVID list, on which they were placed on Monday. This makes them eligible to play in Sunday night's game against the Las Vegas Raiders. Reports at the time indicated that neither of them tested positive for the virus but were placed on the list after being in close contact with an infected person. Fisher is healthy and should be expected to start against Las Vegas in his usual position at left tackle. Schwartz has already missed three games at right tackle with a back injury. While we were hopeful that he might be ready to play on the Sunday following the bye, The fact that he is not practicing on Thursday suggests that backup offensive lineman Mike Remmers will continue to be first in line to fill in. Remmers, however, was listed as a limited participant in Wednesday's practice. If he ends up being unavailable to play against the Raiders, we could expect that undrafted rookie Yasser Durant will step in for Schwartz. Durant had a limited number of snaps subbing for Remmers when the veteran was shaken up in the Week 9 game against the Carolina Panthers. Rookie cornerback Bo Pete Keys didn't practice on Wednesday because of an illness. The Chiefs said he would be back at practice on Thursday. The Kansas City Chiefs will return both starting LT Eric Fisher and RT Mitchell Schwartz from the reserve COVID-19 list on Thursday. Chiefs VP of Communications Ted Cruz announced ahead of Thursday's media availability that both players are back. The two starting tackles were first placed on the reserve COVID-19 list on Monday after being deemed high-risk close contacts to a positive test. Backup OT Martinez Rankin was also placed on the list, but he has not yet been activated. You can expect both of these moves to be made official later today when the NFL's official transaction report is released. While both players return to their active status on the 53-man roster, Only one of the two players is tracking to play on Sunday night football against the Las Vegas Raiders. Fisher was back at practice on Thursday for the Chiefs, but Schwartz remains absent from practice with the same back injury that has caused him to miss three full games this season. This injury is starting to become concerning as he's now missed four full weeks if you include the bye week. The good news, of course, is that Fisher should play in week 11. That gives the Chiefs a much more comfortable situation as far as their tackle depth is concerned. The next thing to look for ahead of the matchup with the Raiders is the status of Mike Remmers, who was limited on Wednesday with a rib injury. Kansas City Chiefs de Taco Charlton has taken to Twitter to let fans know about his status following an ankle injury in the Week 9 game against the Carolina Panthers. He previously updated fans, confirming that he fractured his ankle during the game. Andy Reid also reconfirmed the injury on Monday, but wouldn't commit to Charlton going on injured reserve or any sort of timeline for his return. On Monday, Charlton let everyone know that the taco truck was going into the shop to get fixed on Tuesday. He also says that he'll come back better than ever. That certainly would seem to suggest that Charlton is set to have surgery on his fractured ankle today. He happens to be in proximity to one of the most renowned orthopedic surgeons, specializing in foot and ankle injuries. Dr. Robert Anderson has his practice in Green Bay, Wisconsin. He's routinely worked on NFL stars, repairing anywhere from the most severe fractured ankles to evaluating the most minor of ankle sprains. 
It's worth noting that this is not the first time that Charlton has dealt with an ankle injury. He's had an ankle scoped two times while he was with the Dallas Cowboys. It's unclear if this is the same ankle that he injured with the Chiefs. Watkins hasn't had any setbacks and is set to return this week, per NFL Network's James Palmer. The Chiefs will want all hands on deck to keep from getting swept by the Raiders on the season. The Kansas City Chiefs are expected to welcome wide receiver Sammy Watkins back to game action in Week 11. Watkins has been sidelined since injuring his hamstring in Week 5, but he was a full participant in practice on Wednesday. After Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey, the Chiefs pass catchers very week to week. Kelsey leads the team with 58 receptions and Hill is second with 44. After that, Clyde Edwards Elaire has 28 receptions, Michael Hardman has 25, and Watkins and Demarcus Robinson each have 21. The fact that Watkins has that many in spite of missing four games speaks volumes. The Chiefs face the Las Vegas Raiders this week, and a defense that ranks 19th in pass defense efficiency. They're not awful, but there's a better than even chance this game turns into a shootout. The Raiders beat the Chiefs 40-32 earlier this year, and the Chiefs put up 28 and 40 points in the two matchups last year. Watkins is not going to be a must start this week, but there's going to be some flex value at least. In Week 10, the Raiders hosted the Denver Broncos at Allegiant Stadium for the first of two contests in 2020 against their AFC West rival. The Raiders, led by a rushing attack that amassed over 200 total yards, won by a score of 37-12 to move to 6-3 on the season and 3-0 within the division. RB's Devontae Booker and Josh Jacobs stole the show, accounting for four scores on the ground. Jacobs registered his third career game with at least 100 rushing yards and two rushing scores, while Booker set a new career high with two rushing touchdowns of his own. The duo became the second pair of Raiders rushers to each surpass 80 rushing yards and two rushing touchdowns in the same game, while hoisting the Raiders rushing attack to an average of 190.7 yards per game over the last three contests, a mark that ranks first in the AFC and second in the NFL over that span. On defense, the unit recorded five total takeaways for the first time since October 6, 2013 against San Diego and just the third time in the last 10 seasons. Their four interceptions recorded marked their first such performance since November 9, 2008 against Carolina. Leading the way was S. Jeff Heath, who tied a career high with two interceptions, while LB Nick Kwiatkowski and DeCarl Nassib also added one apiece. LB Nicholas Morrow also shined in the contest, posting his second career sack, forcing a fumble and logging two passes defensed. Here are some notable connections between the two squads. Raiders head coach John Gruden and Chiefs head coach Andy Reid spent time on the same coaching staff in Green Bay from 1992 to 94, serving as a wide receivers coach and tight ends offensive line coach, respectively. Raiders C. Rodney Hudson was originally drafted by Kansas City in the second round, 55th overall, of the 2011 NFL Draft and spent four years with the Chiefs from 2011 to 2014, playing in 51 games with 35 starts. Raiders defensive line coach Rod Marinelli and Chiefs assistant head coach special teams coordinator Dave Tobe spent time on the same coaching staff in Chicago from 2009 to 12 serving as assistant head coach, defensive coordinator and offensive line coach, respectively. Raiders offensive coordinator Greg Olson coached Chiefs WR Sammy Watkins in 2017 with the Los Angeles Rams. Olson also coached Chiefs QB Chad Henney in 2012 and again from 2015-16 in Jacksonville. Chiefs offensive coordinator Eric Bienyama spent time on the same coaching staff at UCLA as Raiders offensive line coach Tom Cable from 2004-05, serving as the running backs coach and offensive coordinator offensive line coach, respectively. Chiefs offensive line coach Andy Heck spent time with Raiders offensive coordinator Greg Olson in Jacksonville in 2012, serving as offensive line coach and assistant head coach quarterbacks coach, respectively. Chiefs CB Antonio Hamilton originally entered the NFL as an undrafted free agent with the Raiders in 2016. The Chiefs enter Week 11 following their bye week and will head into the contest with a record of 8-1 and riding a four-game winning streak, with their last and only loss coming against the Raiders. The Chiefs will travel to Tampa Bay to play the Buccaneers following this week's game before returning home to host the Broncos in Week 13.
The Raiders will prepare for a two-game road swing against the Atlanta Falcons and New York Jets in the consecutive weeks that will follow after Sunday's AFC West clash.